Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to another great sword class. Um, I want to do something a little different today. Um, this is not sort of a part of the series of things I'm working through. Um, in my mechanics based curriculum I wanted to give you guys a little flow drill to work with. Now, this is not my drill. Um, this is a drill I believe initially created by Matt Gallus. Um, brought down to MKDF um, and <laughs> spread around. Um, it was taught to me uh, by Jess Rojek, um, our, one of our my main instructors at MKDF. Um, but I want to talk about it in the context of Montante in a slightly different way than I've seen it when it's taught in Longsword. In Longsword, this is generally a flow drill. It's to teach comfort um, in moving the sword continuously. Um, it's supposed to smooth out your actions and all these things. And these are all true for Montante as well, but I think it has a different thing to teach us in Montante too, and that's what I want to talk about today. With this, using a long sword, the initial energy to get things going isn't that high. Um, with a Montante, it is a lot of energy that you need to apply initially to get things going. So. I'll talk more about the energy inputs at the four different cuts um, and how we start to string these things together. Um, but we're going to talk a lot about um, energy application and learning how to use the momentum of the weapon um, and then how these things change as the speed and the momentum pick up. So let's start with just the basics of the drill. You're doing four cuts. Um, you're alternating short edge and long edge. Um, on the one side we will be doing um, ascending cuts and on the other side we'll be doing descending cuts. The cut pattern is quite simple. You're going to cut up and slightly back. You're going to row through and up. You're going to cut down and short and you're going to roll straight and down. So, long edge, uh, sorry, Short edge, long edge, short edge, long edge. Now you can imagine this first cut, you see me using my body, you need to get a little bit of energy into it. One, two. And the second cut also requires a decent amount of energy at this speed. One, and then we're going to bend the elbow to row around and up, uh, which is different from what I've discussed in most of our cutting mechanics or just sort of general mechanics based classes um, so in this particular situation we're not all that worried about that um, on the descending cuts we will be because if you do it wrong you might hit yourself in the head so one two and you see here that I go into my knees and come up um, there's no harm in using the full body to get that sword up turn it around descend and while it's still behind you, roll it forward. So one, two, three, four. Now, where this sword doesn't require extra energy necessarily at this point is when it ducks down and comes around. Um, if you allow there to be some momentum there, and you can do that with your elbows to not get it hurt, um, then that's a great place to conserve energy. You'll see that sword just kind of comes around. Not a lot of input for me. Again, plenty of input here, but then we use the energy of the drop to allow it to come forward. You'll notice I'm barely holding on there. Right? That kind of just happens. Um, so at this speed, the energy inputs required are on the first one and the second one, and then we really let gravity and momentum do its thing on the other side. Okay? So, one, two, Three, four. Also notice my body is rotating slightly with this. I am cutting to the side. I'm not cutting forward. My first cut is parallel with my body, but slightly backwards. Right? And this one is parallel with the body. Parallel, but slightly backwards. And parallel with the body again. Okay, so at speed, we're at a little bit more speed. We just bring it back. Do it again.
But you'll notice when we start to flow, we can use that to get the first cut's power going. Much like a lot of montante, if you use the body rotation um, aspect of whatever you're working on, you can get some of that speed uh, and some of that energy input without having to input it with your shoulders or with your arms. So on the first cut, this is definitely something we have to power. But if we do it again with that rotation, it powers itself. Um, or at least it powers itself a lot more than from a stationary position. What's interesting is how this changes as we pick up the speed. As a general rule, there's a lot less energy put in to moving the sword where you want it to go. However, if we want a nice, smooth, clean flow drill, we now need to temper some of that energy. When we get to that speed, especially on the descending cuts, I find that I actually have to rein in that speed a little bit or rein in that momentum. And now I find myself, instead of using energy to get the sword moving, I'm using energy to prevent the sword from running away. And it will. Um, this is absolutely normal. It's particularly true if you have a heavier blade like I do. Um, at seven and a half pounds, this is a heavy uh, specimen, and it's also quite large. Uh, it's five foot eight. Um, I'll put a conversion for the metric folks. Um, but at that point, you generally have to start putting in energy to prevent the sword from running off. Um, if you do some of the Godinho, where he really has you spinning, um, or rotating anyway around a central axis, looks like spinning. Um, there are situations with this sword where the uh, momentum and the energy that's provided is enough that it'll actually drag my feet across the ground um, if I'm on, say, gravel. So the point of this exercise is to learn where to put energy in, but then eventually also to learn where to put the energy in to make it all slow down. So I'll do it one more time, uh, slowly, with a little bit of speed, and with uh, a decent amount of speed, and you'll see where my energy inputs start to change. You'll start to see the differences in how I move my shoulders. You'll see whether or not my knees um, buffet myself up a little bit, um, and then you'll start to see my strain in slightly different places than before. And a little faster still. You also noted at that speed it starts to become a little less clean as well. So, much like with anything we do on Montante, um, it is always beneficial to learn this asymmetrically on both sides. So if we can do it on the right, we can obviously do it on the left. The concept is the same. We start with a, a cut up backwards to our left into a long edge unterhau. We unwind, we bring it down, we bring it around. We do the exact same motions just mirrored on the other side, noting that our hand position on the sword obviously doesn't change. Uh, therefore, when we cross versus uncross, uh, reverses compared to the first time. So we're starting this on the left. You start crossed. Okay. One, two, we're crossed. And now we uncross, bring it down, and wrap. So, crossed. Main crossed, uncross, cutter. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three. And everything I talked about in terms of adding energy, taking out energy, all of that remains the same. Um, 
the places where they're put in remains the same. All the same mechanics follow. So now you can try it on right and on the left. Uh, and at the end of the video, I will do them in reverse as well, so you can see it from behind. Um, what I'm going to show you now is how you can, rather than doing it all on one side and just rotating that with a spin around the front, or with bringing your sword around the front um, at the end of the four cuts, we can actually now um, end the four cuts on the one side and bring it back. Noting that the way you put in your momentum uh, when you do that is a little bit different because you are killing it all uh, at the end rather than using the energy to move through. And so if we're doing it from one side to the other and reversing that, um, note that we are killing the momentum. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's a good thing to practice. Not all rules flow perfectly. Um, not all real combat situations <laughs> obviously flow perfectly. Um, and there is a need eventually to be able to switch between uh, rules um, as those situation changes. Uh, we see that a lot um, as, a, as a drill or as a practice when we're looking at um, the sort of the lady guard versus the guard of uh, goods on the ground uh, or the ward guard and we can use those interchangeably as the situation changes. Um, and then you will end your momentum and have to really quickly bring it back. So I will show this bouncing back and forth. Um, there is no change at all. Um, it is just the same thing over and over again as we did before but rather than transitioning in front we just do it again. So I'm not going to walk through the cuts again, they have remained the same. Starting on this side. Yeah, so that's both sides. Um, it doesn't matter which side you start on, uh, you can do either. Um, I know a lot of people learn this better um, in reverse, so in the sense that they see me from behind rather than from the front and trying to mirror it. Um, so I will now do those uh, from the other direction and hopefully um, you'll see what you need to see. Starting on the right. I hope you all find that um, helpful. If I can find it, I will find the Matt Gallus original and post that in the description. Um, if you're a member of MKDF looking at this, or at least um, on our Facebook group, then I can only suggest looking at the Plague Lecture 2, um, which had a bunch of flow drills in it from uh, Jess Rojek, um, where she does this towards the end as the last or second to last drill. Um, in Longsword, you can get a little bit of extra from that as well. Thanks, everyone.